This was the first ever screenshot of World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft today is a massive game, with many secrets, zones and expansions. It has been in development for over 20 years at this point. World of Warcraft's origins come from the Warcraft RTS genre, and anyone that played the Rexar campaign in Warcraft 3 knows that this is very similar to how World of Warcraft is. The Rexar campaign was very different to the other campaigns that you had in Warcraft 3, where it was less like an RTS and more like an MMO that was single player. At this stage, it was kind of obvious that Blizzard was toying with the idea of creating their own MMO. With a good response from the public, Blizzard gained a lot more confidence to actually make serious development on World of Warcraft. In this period of time, World of Warcraft was developed as essentially a Warcraft 3 mod, similar in gameplay to the Rexar campaign or Dota. However, the lead developers at Blizzard decided that a top-down view didn't necessarily show off the world. They thought that a top-down view of the world wouldn't adequately show off the massive world they intended to make, and that that if they give players free camera control, they can see more of the world environment by looking off in the distance and seeing the horizon. Blizzard also had plans to make World of Warcraft as appealing as possible to mainstream gamers. MMOs at the time were seen as something that was incredibly niche and a very hardcore experience. Blizzard wanted to gamble and actually make the MMO genre applicable to mainstream gaming audiences. By removing some of the frustrating things that you can get in MMOs at the time, such as penalties of losing experience when dying, dropping items and gold upon death, and many more inconvenient gameplay mechanics that was popular with MMOs at the time. Classic World of Warcraft was a much more casual experience, and Blizzard intended to design World of Warcraft with this idea in mind. Contrary to popular belief, World of Warcraft was not designed to be a hardcore MMO, and Classic WoW at the time was seen as a very casual experience by the MMO gaming community. With this design philosophy set in stone, World of Warcraft began development in its alpha stage. During this time, a lot of things that were in Alpha World of Warcraft never made it to the official launch. Various zones never made it into the classic WoW launch, such as the Dragon Isle and the Emerald Dream. But zones weren't the only thing that didn't make it to the official game. Quite a few gameplay decisions never got implemented into the official game of World of Warcraft. For starters, the stats of WoW were completely different at the time. World of Warcraft's stat system was very different and was more similar to the skill system that you had in Dungeons and Dragons. For example, you were given a vast array of skills and stat modifiers to choose from by spending your talent points. At some point, Blizzard decided that this was a little bit too complicated and they wanted to simplify the process of leveling up to a much more basic system such as the talent trees that we got in Classic WoW. However, with the launch of Classic WoW, the old skill system of Alpha WoW was actually applicable to pets. The way that pets leveled up in Classic WoW was pretty much the same way that players leveled up in the Alpha stage. You would be given a pool of points where you can buy certain skills and traits for your pet to learn. It's kind of unknown why they gave this old school skill system to pets in Classic WoW and not players. Perhaps they didn't have much time and they had to release the game quickly, so they gave Hunter Pets the seemingly out of place progression system. Trolls and gnomes were originally designed not to be in the game. In the development stage, they weren't actually thought of as a playable race, but they were added in later, which actually explains why trolls and gnomes shared a starting zone with orcs and dwarves. Another strange thing that never made it to release is that rogues actually used to be able to use a shield, which was called a buckler. Blizzard had an idea that rogues would be a little bit more defensive as opposed to the all-out DPS class that we have today. It's kind of crazy to imagine a rogue not dual wielding and actually using a small shield. Also, raids were designed to be 60 man. It's funny to think about, but the classic WoW raiding where raids were 40 man was actually a compromise by Blizzard to make them smaller. I think that this was a right decision, as a 60 man raid is just way overkill. Perhaps because of lag issues, they actually reduced it to 40 man. And even then, most computers at the time really struggled to process that many characters in a single instance. This development stage of World of Warcraft is very interesting to look at, and the classic WoW that got launched to the public is a lot more polished than the development stage and the alpha stage way back in the early 2000s. It's impossible to say if classic WoW will be a success, but come the release in summer, we will definitely see a lot of people trying out the old school version of World of Warcraft. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. This is Vaulty, signing out.